Okay, so expanded beam red light with this wavelength and vacuum incident in a screen, uh, two narrow slits, double slit experiment, Young's experiment, fringe patterns appears one meters away and we're asked how far in radians and millimeters above and below the central axis are the first zeros of a radiance. Okay, so uh, a little figure here would help. So let's say that these are the slits and uh, they are uh, 0 0.2 millimeters apart. Oops. For example. <clears throat> and uh, let's say that this here is the central axis. And let's say the screen is somewhere here. So the screen is uh, one meters away. Uh, so this is S, let's call this S, and uh, this here, the width, slit width is A. So this is A, 0 0.2 millimeters. And um, we know from the double slit experiment that uh, if this goes uh, there, at point P and uh, the same thing we have here and this goes there um, and let's say that this is angle theta and since these two this is very very large compared to the slit width uh, for small angle approximations we can assume that this is theta so if I were to continue this triangle here 90 degrees uh, this here is my path difference this says if this guy here is r2 and this guy here is r1 this is r2 minus r1 and I can see from the geometry of the figure that r2 minus r1 is just equal to a sine theta and the, oh by the way this angle here is theta also from the geometry of the figure um now uh, I know um, that if the path difference is equal to a full wavelength I would have constructive interference and therefore I would have a bright fr bright fringe however if the uh, path difference which is r2 minus r1 is equal half a wavelength or an uh, or an uh, uh, odd multiple of a wavelength I would get destructive interference and therefore I would get a dark fringe and since uh, uh, this question is asking for uh, the zeros of irradiance the zero of irradiance will happen where there is no irradiance which means there is a dark fringe um, dark spot uh, dark band whatever you want to call it so uh, so I know that happens when um, and the first one this will happen since the question this is an integer multiple so this would just be lambda over 2 if you're half a wavelength the two off leading or lagging then the two phases would uh, interfere the two beams would interfere uh, destructively and uh, putting these two together now I could say that uh, a sine theta is equal to lambda over 2 and uh, we know that for a small angle approximation sine theta if you do a Taylor series expansion on it or for very you know for purposes of simplification uh, it's just equal to theta and so uh, this is and this is let's call it one because this is the first one so uh, so then we get uh, this is equal to from the uh, red equation there lambda over 2a <clears throat> and so now if I plug in the numbers I would get theta 1 to equal lambda in uh, in vacuum 632.8 nanometers 632.8 nanometers divided by 2 times uh, the a is 0 0.2 millimeters so I would have to multiply it by 10 to the minus 6 
to take it to, ten, to nanometers uh, and we get uh, let's see what we get here so plugging the stuff here on the calculator will get us Oh, sorry, this is 2 nanometers 10 to the plus 6. <laughs> what am I saying? So, uh, 1.58 times 10 to the minus 3 radians. So plus or minus because you could have one above or one below uh, M could be uh, you know uh, negative uh, and now that we know uh, let's say that this happens here uh, if this is Y and we know theta uh, we can and uh, we can find uh, uh, we can find uh, uh, the distance so we know from trig also that y will equal to sine theta uh, times s or sine theta 1 times s uh, but um, sine theta 1 is just theta 1 so this becomes theta 1 times s for approximation so this is plus or minus 1.58 times 10 to the minus 3 times uh, the distance is 1 meters and so we get uh, 1.58 times 10 to the minus 3 meters or 1.58 millimeters since the question asks us to find it in radians than in millimeters so uh, this would be one answer And this here is the other answer. Okay, so for part B, how far from the axis is the fifth bright band? So again, uh, bright band meaning we're going to have constructive interference. If we have constructive interference, the path difference, R2 minus R1, has to be an integer multiple of the wavelength. So it has to be M lambda. So here, for part B, R2 minus R1 has to equal M lambda with M being an integer and since we're looking for the fifth that means M equals 5. Now at the same time we know from above we already said from the geometry of the figure that R2 minus R1 is a sine theta uh, so what this means is that M lambda or 5 lambda is equal to a sine theta okay but again uh, we know from the figure that theta will equal y over s because since these are very far from each other we can say that this is theta so or 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 uh, if we draw a lot if we want to be like extremely accurate we we should connect this line to point P and we should say that this angle here is theta and so uh, uh, tan theta is y over s so tan theta equal y over s but again for uh, when theta is very small tan is the same thing as sine is the same thing as theta so this becomes equal theta and uh, uh, which is equal to sine theta 
So now I could replace this guy with y over s. So I get 5 lambda equals a y over s. And I am interested in y, the height of the bright band. So y will be 5 lambda s over a. And now plugging in the numbers. We need this, I believe, in millimeters. So uh, 632.8 in nanometers. To change it to millimeters, we multiply it by 10 to the 6. And s is a meter. To change it to millimeters, that's uh, 1 times 10 to the 3. And then a is already in millimeters, and that is 0 0.2. And so we will get the answer in millimeters. So y will equal to, let's put all this on the calculator. Oh, sorry, this is minus two. So we get 1.58 times 10 to the minus two meters. Did, did I make the same mistake up here? Up here, oh no, up here I was changing two nanometers. So I'm going to the small one here, I'm going to the large one, so minus. Okay, so this is the, uh, the location, this is Y5, this is the location of the fifth uh, bright band. Okay, and uh, part C it says uh, compare uh, these values, and uh, if we compare the values. Uh, from the two answers uh, what do we have what's the uh, distance of the fifth band to the distance of the first zero irradiance so we can divide both answers by each other so uh, if we do that we get we got 1.582 times 10 to the minus 2 so this the top one is the uh, y5 that's the distance of the fifth bright band from the central axis and divided by the distance of the uh, zero irradiance first zero irradiance so this is for a bright band uh, this here is for a dark band uh, and this is the first one so if we divide these two uh, we get uh, 1.58 uh, what did we get for the other one? 1.58 10 to the minus 3. So about 10. So about 10. So this is uh, equal 10. So 10 times more. So the bright the f the distance for the bright band is 10 times that of the first um, dark band. So 10 times larger. So y five of the bright band is 10 times that Ugh. it's a disappointment when this thing stops working on me I apologize Ugh. especially when it happens the last second I'm trying to finish the problem
so y bright band number five is 10 times that of the first dark band that concludes it